Hey, it's Paul. Welcome to YNR Update. I want to do a special episode, um, and this one concerns the head writer on the YNR. It's Chuck Pratt, and I strongly think that Chuck Pratt needs to go. And I'm going to outline several reasons why I think he should find another line of work. I mean, YNR is degraded to a point where I think it's almost unwatchable for a lot of people. The storylines are disjointed, the characters are unrecognizable, and I'm going to jump into that. The first thing is I want to deal with Devon and Hillary and their storyline. I mean, it was one of the strongest storylines going, and now it's been reduced to two or three scenes in one episode a week. A lot of people were invested in their love story and still continue to be invested, but they don't see the characters. I don't know how you can keep a storyline going if it's so disjointed. The other thing I want to talk about is Colin and Jill. They basically have no storyline. Uh, whatsoever. They started out looking like it was going to be a battle for Chancellor with Kane, and that stalled or has been cancelled. I don't know, but it's no good either. Also, Lily, no storyline. I mean, she and Kane always look like they could have a decent storyline. Kane has a small part in Michael's storyline, which really hasn't been flushed out and has been sort of poked at and unexplained, but at the same token, we're not seeing much and we're not seeing enough to make us believe there's a storyline there so it's kind of disturbing. The other thing is if they're having Michael push Lauren into cheating on him, I mean we've already been down that road extensively two years ago with Carmine. I mean we've all seen it, we've been there and if this isn't the case and Michael's acting weird for some reason at least give us a clue. They've given us no clue, just a lot of abrupt behavior. It's ridiculous and nobody's buying it. You have to give the viewer something to latch on to. Um, <laughs> the other thing is Stitch and Abby. Seriously, it's, it's, it's too ridiculous to even talk about. These people have no chemistry. They're decent actors in their own right, but together they have no chemistry. Uh, they're far apart in age. They have nothing in common other than the fact that both characters have, have trashed their characters or have acted like trashy characters. I mean, with Stitch, I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a hero. I don't know if he's a cheat. I don't know if he wants other people's women. I don't really know. I don't know if he's a doctor either. So, same thing. And they've got Abby just hopping in bed with everybody. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I, I can't keep track and I don't know what the benefit is. I mean, you're really not endearing her as a character. Um, so, I'm puzzled. The other thing is Sharon is always a suspect. This is getting old. This goes back to before Chuck Pratt, and I've talked about it before. Find something for her to do. She's a great actress. She's really, really loved, has a great fan base. Find something for her to do that's not at the end of a rope or, you know what I mean, in jail, murder suspect. Come on. You can do better than that. You can utilize this person, and she hasn't been utilized properly in a long time. Uh, the other thing is the Joe and Avery storyline. Oh my God, could you be any more predictable? I mean, from the minute Joe walked into town, we knew where this was going, and it was like, all right, hurry up and do what we know you're going to do. You're going to send Avery over to this guy, and they still haven't even done it in a good way. How did they do it? The same predictable way, the same storyline they ripped from Jack when Jack was paralyzed. Put him in a, a rehab facility, make him angry, and then make a woman come and get him out of his funk and they fall back in love together. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's been done. We've seen it. Go find another storyline. Seriously. Um, the other one is Nikki. Nikki has no storyline. Ever since the Christine thing, Christine and Nikki have no storyline. So do you, do you want to find a storyline or is, are they are they just going to be arm candy for the significant others? Because you've got two great actresses there that don't really need to be arm candy. So... I don't know. The same thing with the alcoholism. It stopped right after that accident. Haven't even mentioned it. Do you know how alcoholism works, Chuck? With Neil and Nikki, I think that you have no sensitivity or you have no clue of how alcoholism works. You don't get to write it out after a storyline. These people have been alcoholics for quite some time. It's been written in their storyline. Um, this, but nothing. We get nothing. Um, the murder investigation. Please, for the love of God, it's been dragging on and meandering for so long. Do something. I mean, nobody cares who the murderer is at this point because you've dragged it on for so long. It's not funny. It's just old. And it's it proves that either you don't really have a clue or you're hoping that things will fall into peace. I don't know, but I'm getting tired of it. 
And how many times, seriously, can we use a doppelganger? We used a doppelganger uh, twice with Victor because he used Cassie. And then what? You want us to believe that he has this, what, factory where he can find doubles because he found one in Cassie who ended up being Sharon's long lost daughter. Come on, seriously? And then he found one in Jack. How many more can we get? Oh, no, we can get more because we used Sheila uh, as Lauren. We used Sheila as Phyllis. And, and don't forget, we used the late great Catherine Chancellor as Marge. I mean, how many times can we go to the well? But it really knows no bounds. And the thing for Michael, like I said before, his behavior is so unexplained. Do something with it. Um, Paul Williams, great actor. He's been on the show for so long, Doug Davidson has. And his character is really, he ran a detective agency. His father was the chief of detectives. And now you want us to believe that he is so narrow-minded that he hasn't got a clue how to do his job because he's always the last person to find out. You can't take a character that has these kind of skills that have been established and make him look like he doesn't know what he's doing. It's ridiculous. Um, God, I could go on. Oh, Kyle. Who is Kyle? I mean, the guy showed up and he was one thing. He wanted nothing to do with his dad's business. He seemed to want to put all his devotion into Summer, and now he just wants to be, what, a millionaire playboy? Make up your mind, because that character changes from week to week, and nobody is buying it. No one's invested in it. And even when he came, he was creepy, like lurking around the windows. He wanted to make him look like a suspect. Everybody's either shoved him or taken a shot at him because he's always speaking out of turn. Find a character for this guy. Please, I'm begging you. Um, why did you go to the trouble of bringing Eileen Davidson back if you were going to waste her? Because right now, she's being wasted. Right now, she is, what, Cinderella to Vicky's uh, evil stepsister? No one's buying that, and no one's buying Vicky as that character either. You Seriously, go back and look at some of these episodes, or look at the Bible and see how they develop the characters. It's unreal. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to watch. And Mariah and Kevin... Still, what, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to do anything? Or did you recognize that they have no chemistry together either? Do you know what I mean? But you keep putting them in each other's orbit. Enough. And the other thing that is driving me crazy is that Chloe was sent away. And I don't know if you know this, Chuck, but was sent away and stole Billy's uh, sperm specimen. She came back at, at, when Catherine died and it looked like she was pregnant. Um, is that just going to die? There are so many, I really don't even have enough time to talk about how many storylines have absolutely been abandoned. But, you know, these are a few of the things that I'm jumping into. And the other thing that drives me nuts is Katie McLean. I mean, you have a great actress in Katie McLean, but what, are you going to do the same thing that you did when you were on All My Children and running the show? Because I heard you ran that right into the ground. And you killed her character, uh, Dixie Cooney, or Dixie Chandler, who had been there forever, was one of the most beloved characters. Yeah, I watched that show too. Now, what, are you going to kill her off? Because now you've changed her character. She's unrecognizable from what Cynthia Watros established, and now you're, what, going to kill her off too? Seriously, you're making the show unwatchable. And I heard a rumor that Eric Braden might be gone by November. Are you kidding me? Seriously, I think you might be gone before Eric Braden's gone. Like, check yourself, because right now, a lot of people are ticked off. We've seen a lot of showrunners come and go, and you, God, I don't think you're going to be the last. So either fix the show, or find a new line of work, because it's getting hard to watch. It's getting hard to stomach. And, and I know this comes off as absolutely over-the-top aggressive, but I don't know what else to say, because I've been actually watching this show for 34 years, and I've never seen it this bad, and I've been waiting for it to turn around. I've seen glimmers of hope, and now I see nothing. So those are my thoughts. Please, write back to me. Tell me what your thoughts are, because I want to know if you feel the same way, if you think I'm out of my tree, or what. And the other thing is, don't write Katie McClain complaining about a character. She's a real person. It's a character she plays. Go write the writers instead of harassing her. It's ridiculous. This is Paul. It's YNR Update. Check me out later when I do an update on today's episode. Thanks. Have a great day. And don't forget to check us out on social media.